What is up, Rad Potential YouTube? I'm Mr. Rad, and welcome to the beginning of our journey to build the fastest rotary car on the planet. Now, you guys might be surprised by that statement and why I'm willing to say it. However, we're not talking about building a drag car, building a time attack car, or any sort of fast in the sense of quick accelerating. I'm talking about top speed. How fast can we go within a few miles of distance to accelerate and a few miles of distance to slow down? Much like all these supercars go out and run 270 miles an hour or zero to 300 to zero, like the Koenigsegg test, how can we take a rotary engine and make it live and make it put the power down to get some sort of vehicle to go that fast? Almost exactly a year ago, I made the leap of faith to sell everything I had in Tennessee, step away from my engineering job, and pursue Rad Potential as my full-time gig. Fortunately, with selling my house, selling my Corvette, I had enough of a cushion that I could float for a little while while doing some projects. We built the four rotor FD earlier this year in addition to doing the gears and gasoline collaboration with their RX-8 and working on this right hand drive FD right here for one of my friends. It allowed me to afford the cost of just living a life on this planet. Everything is expensive. But in addition, stepping away from my engineering job with the money I had saved up let me race the American Rally Association limited two wheel drive with my Dodge Colt and with my best friend Calvin. So we had a ton of fun traveling the country this year. Our unreliable old piston engine blew up. We threw a rotary engine in the car not too long ago and went out and we had a ton of fun racing off road rally. And that was one of my bucket list goals for life in general was I wanted to race off road rally. Unfortunately, part of that goal was being able to share the stages with Ken Block, Travis Pastrana, and the guys who inspired me to ultimately get into these cars. You know, Rod Millen isn't racing anymore, but we were out there having fun in our vintage rally car, getting all the cool stories about Rod Millen and all the guys that raced rallies in the 80s. However, racing rally is one of those things where my technical brain doesn't exactly get to be as exercised. Being a good driver, Shredding down a back road is one of the most exhilarating things you can do as far as an adrenaline rush behind the wheel of a car. I've done tarmac racing, made some hits on drag strips, and none of those things really tickled my fancy as far as what I would be willing to risk everything that I have in my life to pursue. So seven months ago on Patreon, I unveiled the new project and the new goals and what we were going to pursue with the Rad Potential YouTube channel. And me, Mr. Rad, what we're going to devote all of our time, money, effort, resources, every single thing we can do to achieve this goal. So the Patreon is ultimately the main reason how I'm able to sustain or be willing to, you know, make the leap into trying to, you know, make Rad Potential something, you know, starting your own small business or even starting a YouTube channel and trying to drive something to be successful is one of the hardest things to pretty much do on the planet. And that's ultimately what attracted me to do it. Civil engineering, that was my day job before. And let me tell you, I specialized in stormwater and hydraulics, and that was kind of what interested me because it was challenging. Doing a stormwater management system for a small residential house, all the way up to understanding the hydraulics of a large lake and the dam and spillways and all of that. I just got bored with it once I figured it out. The equation became the same equation over and over. You just take the piece of property, you plug the data in, you get the data out. You submit the design, the city approves it, and you're done. And that was one of those things that like, yeah, the, the projects changed, like working on a different car, but the goal was always the same. We just achieved a design, right? So with cars, it's much more creative. There's a lot more aspects of doing it your own way, having fun, but yet finding something challenging to do. You know, taking a car to a road course and setting a lap record like the road course lap record is something that a lot of people try to build real fast cars and try to achieve that goal, but ultimately do it in much different ways from people using fans to suck their cars to the ground to putting two steer wheels on the front like the old F1 cars. There's a lot of different ways to like, let's just say, break the rules to then have new rules made, but also make your life interesting and something that you don't need a break from or get bored with doing. So I couldn't be more thankful to the Patreon members and that's why I ultimately shared with them my plan as to what Rad Potential is going to be known for as we go forward and what I think is going to be the staple or the poster child of Rad Potential. So the goal is 
to have the fastest rotary powered car. That doesn't mean we're going to build the fastest RX-8 or the fastest RX-7, and you're going to have to go tune in to the Radworks section of Patreon to figure out what the exact chassis and design is going to be. Much like Lockheed Martin has their Skunk Works, my Skunk Works is called Radworks. So that's the secret projects division of Rad Potential, the place where we're going to put all of our technical engineering abilities to use to build something that is effectively the sharpest knife in the drawer. So in order to build the sharpest knife in the drawer, we have to understand how to build a knife. We're gonna have to work with dull knives for a while until we understand what the sharpest one is. A lot of engineering designs don't get completed on the first go, and that's ultimately why your project car is always a project. So this is my 1979 Mazda RX-7, also known as the Rad X-7. Built this thing from the ground up, every single nut and bolt, and I have to give a huge thanks to everybody who helped me put this car together and helped me learn how to do what this car unlocked for me as far as skills, especially to my buddy Charles for not only letting me take ownership of this car, but teaching me pretty much everything I know about rotary engines. So huge thanks to everybody who's helped us get here, but we're gonna be changing this car more. The inevitable project car is never ending in pursuit of going faster. So a couple weeks ago, we took this thing out and we tested its actual top speed. So drop in the comments below how fast you think we went in this car. There's not gonna be any speed data shown on the screen when you see us do this run. So watch the video, understand the people who know what this car is, you know what it is, you know how much power it makes, and let me know your top speed guess below. With the Radix 7, I'm going to be testing some things for the Radworks secret project. Okay, so we need to learn some stuff about going really fast. So, in its current configuration, the mechanical top speed of the car at 8200 RPM is 158 miles an hour. Now, that's just the first part. If our goal is to get to 170 miles an hour, or let's say 200 miles an hour, Mechanical top speed, if the car can't physically do it because of the gear ratio and the RPM, then the aero, the suspension, and all that stuff doesn't matter. So we really need to focus on getting my mechanical top speed up. So I've got this little chart here outlining where I currently sit with my mechanical top speed, a proposed change, and then the proposed actual top speed we're gonna have after. So in a previous Radworks video on Patreon, I went through a lot of this gear ratio stuff and we actually scienced out the gear ratios for the new chassis. So the next video on the channel with the Radix 7 is going to be us testing some of these changes. So currently we sit on a 22 and a half inch tall tire. If I go to a 24 inch tall tire in the back, our top speed goes from 158 to 169. If I keep the 24 inch tire and switch my rear gear ratio from a 410 to a 3.9, which is just a stock GSL, so non fancy five letter axle, Ratio, we now have a top speed of 178, and that is with my RX-8 transmission at 8,200 RPM. And I know y'all are all gonna be like, well, you can rev a rotary to 10,000 or rev it to 9,000. You can. We have to just pick an arbitrary number to stay at for now. If we're like RPM is a variable, then now none of this stuff matters. We change an RPM, the change, speed changes. So we're just giving you guys something to base that off of. The last change we're gonna make is I have a Series 4 Turbo 2 transmission, which dimensionally is the same as an RX-8. We'll have to remake the cross member, which is no big deal, should bolt in. And the T2 transmission, it's a five speed to the RX-8 six speed. This is gonna blow your guys' minds, but the fifth gear ratio is actually taller than sixth gear in the RX-8 transmission. So fifth gear is 0.76 in the Turbo 2 transmission and the RX-8 it's 0.86, so a whole tenth of a gear ratio bigger, and that gear ratio change gets us at 8,200 RPM with the taller tire in the 3.9 to 197 miles an hour in fifth gear. So at that point, we'll play with RPM, and I can go up to 8,350, will get me on the nose 
200 miles an hour. So these are changes that we can do, and I can take this car to the dyno at Failing's Performance with Ernie, and we can run it and simulate a top speed run, make sure the engines go to oil pressure, all of that stuff, before we actually go out and have to struggle through what's ultimately gonna make achieving the goal of having the fastest rotary car on the planet, not the Radix 7, of course, but making the Radix 7 and the other car much faster, which is gonna be suspension, aerodynamics, rear aerodynamics, drag, and then ultimately how much horsepower do we need to go that fast. So. One of the things I've always been inspired by is aviation and just crazy engineers in general, people who put together amazing teams. And if I asked you the question, if you could go to lunch with one person, dead or alive, who would it be? What would your answer be? Put that in the comments below. For me, my answer is Kelly Johnson. So Kelly Johnson was the guy who was the head of Lockheed Martin Skunk Works. He's the guy ultimately responsible for the SR-71 Blackbird. And I would love to learn any sort of tips that he had when it came to you know, managing people, pushing the limits of both material and what you could do at that time. You know, you gotta think, that plane in the late 60s and the 70s was going well over 2,000 miles per hour in the sky. And that's insane. Considering that in 1970, if you bought a big block 392 Chevelle or even a Corvette of the time, it probably wouldn't even go much over 130 without dancing off the road. So it's crazy the difference in technological achievement. And that's something that inspired me to try to find something that I can push to be the very best at. So this project, the Radworks Top Secret Car, all of that stuff, is gonna be one of the most fun journeys that I cannot wait to bring you guys along. Whenever I had the idea to make the jump full time into this was mainly because I knew that I needed something that I was gonna be so passionate about that I wouldn't let it fail, that I wouldn't give up, that there would be something that would be willing to give up everything that I have to pursue. And ultimately, this is that goal. You know, there's nothing out there that I think is gonna stop me from doing this, aside from maybe a world ending cataclysm of events. If it's something that we can build here, we can find the right people, we can learn the right things, then by all means, I'm gonna give up whatever I can, and I'm gonna go build the fastest rotary powered vehicle that's ever driven across the ground. It's gonna be so rad. So with that, live a life you don't need a vacation from. I'll see you guys in the next video. Keep it rad. All right guys, so it's the end of the video. The thing that's crazy, I just realized as I was picking up this camera is, we won the Ken Block Flat Out Forever Award, right? 43 was his number, 43 Institute. Our goal with the top speed car is to go 243 miles per hour. That gets us the world record for the fastest rotary engine vehicle across the ground. You know, not the fastest RX-7, not the fastest RX-8, not the fastest Mazda car, but we're gonna use a rotary engine in another chassis. And, and I could have made a video at the beginning of the year whenever I bought the new chassis, or I guess had the new chassis getting built, and it wouldn't have been the same. I, I think I'm one of those people that I like to have a very, very high confidence level that I can do something before I'm gonna tell somebody I can do it. Even if that means that, you know, I have to go learn some stuff and we're gonna go and I've been learning this summer and arrow and studying and reading and researching all of this. And we're gonna learn all of what we need to learn to be able to achieve the goal we need to achieve. You know, I have a lot of respect for people when you ask them something and they tell you that they don't know how to do it, but that they can go figure it out and that they will go figure it out. And this is me saying that we're going to figure it out. So the rally stuff was rad. We'll probably do a couple events in the next year. Still planning on, I've got another turbo. It's funny. I actually emailed the people who I bought this one from and they were like, yeah, sure. We can send you another one. So I have another turbo coming. I guess two more turbos coming, but the yellow RX-8 is still going to keep going. We're still going to have tons of fun. And literally, it's uh, it's like I got to peel a couple stickers off and we're ready to leave. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.